Hey folks, today I'm going to talk about the pen tool in Photoshop. This is one of my favorite selection tools in the program and uh, it can be a little difficult to master though. So in, in today's video, this is going to be the best ways to master the pen tool. So let's first talk about the pen tool in light of this image here that I have up on screen. Um, this here is going to be just my, I'm, I'm calling it my skateboard ramp. I'll go ahead and uh, get rid of my guides here for right, for right now. And you can see is my skateboard ramp. Here's my skater I hear here, um, just you know for reference. And I'm using this in terms of kind of the how I think of curvature when I'm using the pen tool. And the way that I think about it is I think it in terms of there are areas of my object that uh, have straight edges to them. I call them the flats. You can see here I've encircled areas here that are generally kind of a straight line before it gets into the curvature area of, of the, uh, the particular object I'm looking to path. And then there are transition zones. So, you know, you can see here that these would be from this point to this point, generally speaking, would be that curvature. And when working with the pen tool, I'm looking to, for the most part, place my anchor points on either end of my curvature and then utilize the handlebars in between those anchor points to adjust that curvy line, the line segment between anchor points. So my first tip would be that when you're looking to outline something, you want to always draw in one direction. You don't want to double back on yourself. And by this, what I mean is, here's my pen tool, and I'm looking to place my first point up in here somewhere uh, along the top edge of this object. And when I draw this line out, I'm going to draw, and let's go, we're going to go clockwise around this whole thing. So I'm going to draw to the right. So I'm going to click and drag to the right. If I hold shift, it helps constrain me into a straight line, which is nice. So I'm going to click and draw out. Now my next point needs to be right here about at this corner. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in real far. And I'm going to be looking to place that next point here. And you'll notice that now I'm going to be going straight down. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here and draw straight down, matching this forward edge. I, I think of it like train going down the tracks. So like this is right at this point, this is the head of the train heading in this direction. And I'm going to point the head of the train down the ramp like so. And then I need to adjust this handlebar and point it back here to the caboose, so to speak. And to do that, I'm going to hold the Alt or Option key. And now my pen tool turns into the direct arrow tool here, direct selection, and I'm going to point this handlebar back to the original point so that the line segment between those two points is nice and straight aiming back. So now what I have here is I have a point and it's already set up sending that path in the right direction. And we know this is a little flat section, you know, I might make an adjustment here, a smaller handlebar. And I'm going to come down right to the point here where I feel like my curvature begins. And I'm going to go ahead and just drop a point here and drag out a couple of handlebars. And I can adjust the handlebars between these two points, like so. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back out a little bit. I'm going to look at this whole section of curvature. And the curve continues all the way down to about right here where it drops down into the flats again. And it's at that point, generally when I'm outlining something, I'm looking for these spots. I'm looking for like right at the point where the curvature begins, right where it ends. And those are the spots I'm dra dropping my anchor points and dragging out handlebars. Because I can always go back into the segment and add more points and make fine adjustments. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out some handlebars. I'm going to, in this case, hold shift to constrain this forward leading handlebar straight across the flats. Good, just like so. So I get a couple of handlebars. You know, another quick tip is, generally speaking, I also try to get the handlebars that are between those anchor points, the ones that are kind of aiming back at each other, to generally be about the same length. Um, you know, I, I'm never too overly exacting with that, but for the most part, I, I just visualize that and I say, well, you know, can I get them to be about the same length? And from there, that puts me kind of in, in the ballpark to be able to make some of these fine adjustments, where now I'm just you know, adjusting for this curvature. So you look at that up, you know, my goal with the pen tool is to go for the least amount of anchor points possible. Um, because then my, the line segment between those anchor points is going to create the smoothest curves. 
I'm not gonna get anything jaggedy or weird if I start adding in points in there. Other thing I do is I'll zoom in and I'll take a closer look. And you can see it's not, because I'm zoomed out a bit, I need to make some fine adjustments to this to make sure that it matches. And it's looking pretty good there. Back out a bit. And it's looking like I might need to drop a little anchor point in between here to get this line segment to really match nicely. So at any point I can bring my pen tool over and a little plus sign appears and I can click and I can hold the command key and the, holding the command key allows me to move this particular anchor point. So I'm going to get that one in place and then from there I can use the option alt key to make some fine adjustments here to the line segments between these anchor points. Just like so. So always looking to get, you know, the generally the least amount of anchor points possible to get the smoothest curvature. So again, the idea, if you look at this section here, you have a couple of anchor points. And you'll notice that one of them is filled in. You'll see that when I bring the pen tool over to that anchor point, and I hold the command key, it turns into this direct selection tool, which allows me holding the command or control key to adjust just that particular anchor point. You'll notice this one down here, however, is white. It's not filled in. It's not the active one currently. If I wanted to select this one, I could come over to it and hold the command key and click once on it. Uh, sometimes that can be a little too finite. It's like, oh, I gotta click on these tiny little squares all the time. Sometimes it's e easier, I find, to just get within the region, get nearby, hold the command key, and I draw this little box over it. And it allows me to just kind of identify and say, select this one, get this one going for me, so that I can make adjustments to it of some kind. And using the Alt key on the PC or the Option key on the Mac, we can come over to the handlebars and you'll see that it turns into the Convert Point tool, which is like this little carrot. And it allows me then, when I hover over it, to adjust just a singular handlebar at a time to really sort of fine tune that curvature between anchor points. It's real important when working with the pen tool that you're very accurate. Um, you know, if there's any pixel bleed over, that'll show up when you go to make any other adjustments. You can see that when we zoom way in, you know, I could probably come a little bit closer here with my, my pen tool line to hug into these pixels a little bit better. Otherwise, some of this white will bleed through, and maybe I, I'm just looking for the brown portion of this here for my selection. So it's important that we utilize some of the navigation tools. In my case, I'm using the control equals and minus, control plus and minus to zoom in, control plus, control minus, zoom out, and then control zero to fit to screen, and control alt or command option zero to snap up to 100%. Usually when I'm working with the pen tool, I often will be coming in very fre frequently at much higher percentages than 100%, really to just make sure that I'm hugging that object perfectly. Now I could certainly with an object like this as I'm, I'm selecting it, uh, because it's a pretty symmetrical object, symmetrical ramp, I mean I could certainly continue to select the whole object. But one of the beauties of the pen tool is the ability to copy and paste pen segments around and manipulate them. If we come over here to the pen path, you'll see I have my work path indicated here. And my work path right now, it's important to understand that the work path is sort of a temporary state for it. Um, if I were to go start drawing another path, it would begin to overwrite this. The other thing we want to look at with this work path, I'm going to make my panel bigger is you'll notice that the area that I'm selecting right now is in gray. Everything else is in white. And as we know, working with masks, white is on, black is off. White is the selected portion, black is the deselected portion. In this case, with a, a path, we're looking at the white selection. Everything but the ramp is going to be selected. Everything but this area that I have selected. And I don't want that. I want the ramp to be selected, but that's okay. At any point, I can hold the command or control key and I can draw a box over all of these points, select them all. And up here on the options bar, I can come up here and I can choose combine shapes. Uh, this is basically sort of like creating a new selection. Uh, whereas, you know, then there's subtract front for shape, which would be subtracting from a selection. So I'm gonna combine shapes and you'll notice now in my work path that everything is gray except for this portion that I'm selecting. And that's what we want. 
to get myself out of this temporary state, put it in a slightly more per permanent state uh, so that I don't overwrite my own path, I'm going to double click this work path, call it path one, that's fine, I can even call it left. Click OK. Now check this out, I can certainly continue my path all the way around this ramp, but because I know that this object is pretty darn symmetrical, I'm just going to go ahead and come on down and go about halfway through my ramp here, make a fine adjustment, and here we go. So I've got that, and I'm just going to come around here to complete this path. When I get back to the origin, a little O appears next to my pen, and you'll see that it completes that path. So here's my selection all the way around. I'm not worried about things going off of the edge of the document itself into the artboard. Now check it out. You can see over here in my path panel that I have the selected area of this ramp. Now I could certainly just select the whole ramp, that would be fine. I can also hold the command or control key, select all of these points, and hit command control C to copy to the pasteboard. And I can create a new path, we'll call it right, and I can hit command control V to paste. And at that point I'm able to come up here to edit Transform Path, Flip Horizontal. And when I do that now, I can activate Free Transform, and I can, holding Shift, bring this path over here to this side, and nudge it into place. And because this skateboard ramp is symmetrical, I ne only needed to really path one side of it, copy the path, paste it to another side, and then I'm good to go commit that change and see now I have the left and the right. And anytime you're working with the pen tool or uh, channel selections as you may have seen some of the other videos that we've done about channel selections, you can have multiple pen pa paths or multiple channel selections and you can begin combining one and adding to it. So in this case if I were to come to this left and hold the command or control key and you'll see that my icon here goes from being a regular scrubby finger, which is what I like to call it, to a scrubby finger with a dotted outline indicating convert this into a selection into the marching ants. I hold the command control or control key and I click and now I have those marching ants. Now if I come down to the right and I hold command and add shift, notice my scrubby finger with the dotted box gets a plus sign in there when I hold the shift key, adding that to the selection, and now I have the entire thing selected the way that I want it to be. So that's a, a quick tip, you know, if you need to select one portion, you can copy paths around, um, and then using the command and shift together, you can take a selection and add to it. Conversely, command and option, or control and alt on the PC, uh, will subtract from the selection. So let's say if I wanted to subtract the left hand ramp from this overall selection, I can hold Command or Control on the PC and Option together, Alt on the PC, and you'll see there's a little minus sign in that little box. I can click it and now I've subtracted from the selection that left hand side. So it gives you flexibility using some of these modifier keys of Shift and Alt or Option along with the Command or Control key to add to or subtract from your selection. It's a nice sort of power user shortcut to it all. Here is a common thing that happens to many people when they're working with the, the pen tool. You're, you're plugging your anchor points and handlebars along, everything's going just fine, and then all of a sudden it's, you, you, you place a point just like this, you go to draw your next point, boop, and it's just this blank one that's not connected. All of a sudden your train has fallen off the tracks, as I like to call it and you're disconnected from the original path. Maybe you were in there manipulating. It often happens when you're adding pen points to other parts of the path, manipulating other parts of the path, and then you jump back to continuing that path down the line, uh, and all of a sudden it shows up as, as one of these. You come back to do other work, and what starts to happen is it shows up as a blank over here, and sometimes it'll show up as like a little X. So what we need to do is select it, hold the command or control key and then circle it like so, and delete it and get it out of there. Come back to the last point that you made, which is down here. I'm going to just hold command and draw this little box to select this zone. Make sure that I'm uh, clicked on it so that I'm selected on it. And you need to hold the Alt key or Option key on the Mac. And 
a little icon here shows up. It's like a little box, almost looks like a transistor. It's like a little box with like two little lines coming off of the side. Hold the Alt key and click once to tell that point, start from here, please. And then when you go to draw out your next point, like so, it will be connected to that previous point. So that's a really handy tip to just remember if your train falls off the tracks all of a sudden, go ahead and get back to that original point, option or alt, click it once to tell it, start from here please, and then continue your pathing. So, you know, on an object such as this, which is a photograph of a couple of these, um, you know, these pictures, I'm looking for, uh, I'm going for the, you know, the least amount of pen points possible as I draw around. And I'm looking for these transitions. So in this case, you know, the, a lot of this top of the jug is one big transition. I might place, you know, indicate, say, well, from here to here, that's one set of curvature. And then this section here wrapping around, that will be another segment of curvature, kind of a more acute curve. So, you know, I've got this point. I'm going to make an adjustment to the handlebars either side and come over to this side, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this area. And see, fell off the tracks. I'm going to command click this point, option click this point to tell it, start from here. That would be control and alt on the PC. I'm going to wrap around to this other side, drop my point, get my handlebar, get the option key for the handlebars. There we go. It's a nice curvature around, around that zone in there. Here's another tip. Sometimes you run into objects where it's very hard to see the exact edge of it. The lighting that was used, the reflection in this case of these, um, of these pictures, and the reflection of the white background up onto the reflectivity of the edge of it makes it hard for us to see the edge of this object. So a quick tip is you can command click to kind of deselect yourself off of the path. You don't want to be loading the path in this scenario, so you want to not have the path active in this case. You can click off the path and you can click over here in the panel in the gray area to be deselected from it so it's not highlighted like so. You come over to your layers and you get an adjustment layer going. In this case, I could use something like the curves. And I can darken this down so that I can more easily see the edge of this object. You can say, where is the edge of this object? I'm not really worried too much about other stuff because this is going to be a temporary adjustment layer that I'm going to use. I can come back to the paths, get them going, hold the command key to select this point, and I'm going to Alt Option click on it to tell it, please start from here. I'm going to put it on the edge here where I can finally see where the edge of this object actually is, which will then allows me temporarily to see where I need to be drawing this out. Sometimes things go a little nutty on you in this tool you may experience. I'm going to go ahead and draw out these handlebars like so. And then when I'm done, when I feel like I've got it, like, okay, I'm going to come back around to my origin here. Whoosh, click and drag, dragging in the direction of my pen path. I can come back here and I can take this curve and I can drop it in the trash. It was really just there to help me see the edge of that object in order to get that pen path around it. Now, there may be times that you're working in the program and, you know, it's a preference. I don't have too much of a problem seeing this blue path line on the, this object, but, you know, there may be times that you want a different color. Maybe, you know, you can see here, if I click on this in the options bar, this little gear icon, you know, if I was working with green, green against green can be a little hard to see sometimes. So it's nice to have the option to come in and change it to a complementary color uh, so it'll stand out a little bit more. And if it's too thick or too thin, you know, maybe I want a thicker pen path line to be able to see it. And maybe I want, you know, a thinner pen path line, something like half a pixel, thin little line. So it depends on the level of detail you're working on. You can change the color of the pen path on the fly to something that's a little easier to see for you. So here's an example of, you know, we have these pictures here and we've got an outline of the picture, but right now if we were to go and lift this up off of it, it would take this white background in the handle with it. So we need to subtract this section from the overall selection. If we go to our paths panel, we'll see here's our path, and you'll notice the object in that path is white. I'll make my panels bigger here. 
Notice the path is white and the area around it is grayed out, indicating that the pitchers themselves will be selected and they'll get the marching ants around them when we activate this. But we need a knockout. We need the area in here, the handle, to be gray over here in this so that it's just the pitchers without this white area. So to do that, what we need to do is we want to stay on this same path, but we don't want to continue a new path in here until we've indicated that we're subtracting that from the selection. So to do this, I command or control click in the outside area so that the anchor points disappear, indicating, okay, the path is in place, but we're not actively selected on it. So we're not going to be adding to that in any way. And now we come up here to this drop down, the little double boxes here, and we choose subtract front shape. And when I zoom in to this area and I begin to draw out a new pen path, so I'll choose here and here. And I'll come around to this side of the transition. Get a nice curvature in there between these handlebars. And then I'll come all the way down here where it just about turns into another more acute turnaround. I might be able to get a nice curvature with one fail swoop like so. That looks pretty good. In this case, my handlebars are not the same length, but it's working out for me pretty well. Like so, pretty close. And I can come down here to this little zone, get that selected. I can come up, you'll see in here that it curves up and then there's like a swoop up before another transition. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right to the beginning of this skateboard ramp. If you remember my skateboard ramp, in order for us to see this a little bit better, we're going to pull up a temporary curve. We'll darken it down a bit so we can see this edge. It's just temporary. We'll dump it later. Go back to my paths. Option or alt click to tell that point, start from here, please, in case it gets off. It's just a good habit. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come to the base. This is my skateboard ramp. I'm going to come to the base of it. This would be the flats zone. And I'm going to go ahead and draw out my handlebars. Using the Option or Alt key, pull this handlebar out to match that line. And check this out. I can certainly try to come up the ramp and all that. I'm just going to come up to the top of the ramp. And I'm going to click and I'm going to draw this out. And as I pull this line out and pull this line in, I'm able to match that curvature of that little segment in there. And I'm going to go ahead and make just kind of a fine adjustment to this one here. Now, here's another thing that happens a lot to students when they're working. And you'll notice my, where my anchor points are here. Partic pay particular attention to the length of this handlebar right here. So that when I come back to the origin here, what's going to happen? See that little sort of twist around curly Q thing? That is because this handlebar point is going beyond the edge of this anchor point. And I don't need that. I don't ever need my handlebars to cross over each other. I always want to keep them, you know, kind of pointing at each other, really. But, the, you know, the further out that this handlebar goes, you'll see it's controlling the curvature of this line segment between them. So I really don't need that one to be very long. I can just come back there and fix that. And then you can see that was just helpful for us to be able to see what we needed to get to. I can take this curve and I can dump it off later. Now, one thing we want to look at with this sort of work as well is there are times when in a production environment, maybe you have a lot of images that need to be pen pathed. And in many cases, they'll send this sort of work off to another service bureau to handle just the outlining, just the pen tooling portion of the retouch. And they'll send a bulk of these off and uh, they'll send them back with outlines on them. Now, if I had, you know, a ton of these images and they were all, you can see down here, it's a 50 megabyte photograph. If I had a lot of these and I tried to upload them to some other retoucher somewhere else, uh, it would take a long time. But what's really cool about um, working with the pen tool is that I can, I can take this image, as long as I keep the file dimensions the same, it's 
Right now it's a TIFF, but if I save this image out and I decide to take it to my desktop for now and I save it out as a JPEG so I can compress it, JPEG and I hit save, I can compress it so it's a nice small file size, I can look at this and get the properties on it and you'll see instead of a 50 megabyte file, now it's a 500 kilobyte file. So you have your 50 megabyte file, save one out, save the, the images out as JPEG. Don't change the image dimensions, the pixel dimensions at all. Um, but you'll see here if I open up this previous pen tool shot. And here it is the JPEG. It opens up as a 50 megabit image. Now it's uncompressed. When I get that work back from the retoucher, I can come over here to the pen paths and there is their pen path that they've created for me. And here is my original file that is sent off. And in this case, no pen path, so that's what they're doing for me. And I've saved it out of that 50 megabyte file as a JPEG. It's 500 kilobits on disk, so it's easy to send. I could email it to them. They can open it up. They could put their pen path on it. I can open their image up. I can hold the shift key using the move tool. I can pick that pen path up and drag it over here to my high res file. And there you go. I've got the pen path that they've created and it perfectly matches my image of the high res file because you don't want to be taking your high res work and compressing it down as a JPEG uh, and then trying to save that back out as a PSD or a TIFF too frequently. It's not a good workflow for the fidelity of your images. So it would be better to shrink all your images down, save as a JPEG, send those out for pen paths, open them back up, and then move that path over to your original file, and then you have all the other retouching that you need to do on the file and the pen path is in place. So those are my tips for beginning to master the pen tool. You know, again, my biggest recommendation when, when working with the pen path is to always start out by drawing in one direction as you go. I'm, don't try to come here with your next point and then double back on yourself. That's when you get those weird curly Q things. Always be sending the head of the train in the same direction. In this case, I'm going clockwise around these pictures. Always stay going clockwise. Every time I click an anchor point, drag out clockwise around the object. And then you can, as you go along, you can hold the Option or Alt key to adjust the handlebar segments. Aiming to try to get fairly, you know, this about the same length handlebars between anchor points. It's a good thing to do. Not always will that be needed as you saw in the case of inside of my uh, pitcher handles here. I didn't need to do that necessarily there, but it's a good rule of thumb to kind of get you going, to get you mastering it. Command key to control the anchor points, option and alt key to control the handlebars. And Always aim for the least amount of anchor points that you can possibly get away with, and your line segments will have a much nicer curvature to them. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down. If you'd like to leave a comment, feel free to leave a comment down below. We'll get back to you. Feel free to subscribe to our channel, and if you'd like to get notifications of this content, hit the little bell icon. And thanks for Canon and B&H for providing some of the video and audio equipment to make these videos possible. Thanks for watching.